So, without any further ado, we'd like to call upon the I'd like to call upon the Prime Minister to open this debate. Here, here. All right. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes. All right. So, um, to start off this debate, I would like to start it with a couple of important definitions and like explanations of the motion and the wording in the motion. First of all, what do we mean by actually revealing this person? We simply mean as like implied by the motion that we will like reveal his identity or her identity and like basic knowledge about him, his picture maybe, or his name. So the important term here is online harassment. It could involve threatening or harassing emails, instant messages, posting information online. It targets a specific person either by a directly contacting them or this like uh, talking about them online or to convey distress, fear, or anger towards them. So. This is a problem, like we see it a lot. We see how it's like, it's growing on and on around us because of the rise of social media. And this thing that we're gonna talk a lot about is the importance of lacking consequences of this action. And our case will revolve around this and trying to stop this uh, like uh, thing from happening anymore. So to like to digest the basic concept of online harassment, like first of all, generally, why is it bad? Why is it a problem? Well, it actually could lead some people to kill themselves from the amount of damage they received by words and words could be hurting sometimes. They either kill themselves, they kill their dreams, they kill their hopes, they ruin people's days. So it's a big problem we, get, we have to deal with. And we see that posting online the information about people who do this harassment is a very good way of dealing with this problem. Now, this thing revolves around the importance of deterrence. Now, when someone like sends a message online or someone sent like a uh, toxic message or uh, threatening someone or sending an uh, inappropriate picture to women, this happens a lot. Well, why did they do they this uh, like online more than they do it in the street because online there's le like less consequences they're basically keyboard warriors so the importance of having consequences for their actions is a very important way to deter them there's a short story i would like to say that there's like uh, an experience done by the woman by a woman she stood somewhere in the street for eight hours she held a sign saying you can do whatever you want to do to me for eight hours no strings attached. So it was a social experience to see how, if we remove the boundaries of consequences, how will people act? Well, first, the people were reluctant to interact with her, but as time goes on, they began uh, being violent, they start assaulting her, they start touching her inappropriately, and they hurt her. So at the moment, she started moving, everyone basically ran away because the consequences returned again. And we will focus upon having the consequences of their actions as a way to deter this from happening anymore. Now, my first argument is it will be a very strong deterrent for online harassment to happen and it would lead to decrease in this problem. Now, as I explained previously, it's a very important concept to understand the strength of consequences. Now, basically, by revealing this, uh, person's identity online first of all we have a concept of online shaming it's like it's a, it's a bad thing it's not always a good thing or it's a bad thing but it's effective if people knew that this guy did something very bad to this person and the identity was spread with evidence of the thing that he or she did to this person by online harassing them their identity will be marked like basically uh this person will be known for doing this certain action and it will he will receive the negative back for from co-workers he could be fired from his job he could be like uh, his friends would uh, like do things to him if he was or she was a kid he, she might get some punishment from their parents some kind of discipline because they did something very bad and they should be disciplined for it now we believe that revealing the identity will lead to people doing this by two ways first of all public shaming itself would lead to them having to face the consequences of other people using harsh and mean words to them now like being on the receiving end of this would kind of teach them a lesson of being like okay actually words hurt like when you're talked down by a whole community when the whole community knows you did something very bad and they start talking you down about it uh this will leave a mark basically it will teach you that the thing that I've been, you've been doing to other people is not being done to you and it feels so bad. And the other thing is actually when people know that like keyboards uh, like on internet, social media, isn't that bulletproof as they thought it is. Like when you do something, people are going to know about it and you're going to be revealed for it and you're going to be questioned for it. If it was so bad. For example, there's a funny thing that a guy in Egypt once like sent an inappropriate picture to a girl and this 
he was he became she like talked to his family she posted the pictures she posted it online on her facebook which was something so brave to do in such a conservative society and the amount of backlash towards him was amazing like basically it, he was he became a meme material like uh it was so deterring to other people from doing this action because they will be afraid of being in a, as much of a joke as it turned out to be him like in this situation and these two factors would lead to decrease in amount of like online harassment in general now we will also focus about women in this particular subject because they receive most of the online harassment than other people like if you talk to any girl the amount of inbox messages she has is like it's like like it's amazing how people focus on attacking it's not amazing actually it's very bad but it's amazing how we don't actually focus on this so much like we should focus on women being the sub being the victim of this harassment and actually having them giving a sub like a power to actually reveal and pinpoint the one who assaulted her with words or one who harassed her to be able to post it online and to focus on the one who actually did this thing or said the bad words or not actually focus on the victim herself is something we would like to have more around um and for that i would like to finish my speech thank you We thank the Prime Minister, and I'm happy to call upon the leader of the opposition. Here, here. In my speech, uh, basically, we will defend uh, basic people's rights. It is right for security, for privacy, and free speech. And um, first of all, I wanted to uh, like talk about two uh, scenarios. Like, firstly, uh, when uh, about argument of deterring um, those criminal uh, those harassers online harassers that um, and secondly uh, to scenarios one uh, people's identity is uh, revealed and secondly when those harassers can uh, hide their identity online uh, so what am I talking about um, what happens in proposition side uh, where uh, if we accept this motion, our uh, problem will not solve, uh, will not be solved at all. Why true? Because nowadays people uh, know how to hide their uh, online identity, uh, like through the Tinder apps, like uh, those kind of apps. And, mm, uh, and there's a lot of uh, some tutorials that show us how to hide our identity online and um, uh, they can hide their uh, computer's IP. So uh, uh, basically motion are not deterring this harassers because if he really wants to like uh, harass someone and uh, like stalk them they like aware of this motion and they will hide their identity so uh, problem will not be solved but uh, like some people can harass uh, another people by not knowing it uh, uh, but the other um, like um, for example woman can consider that uh, some kind of words as a sexual harassment and she will reveal uh, his identity and uh, we s we think um, that uh, the basic people's right for security will be violated uh, so here's the analogy when criminals are being catched by uh, like uh, policemen uh, they he gets even and just punishment, a term in prison or administrative punishment. Uh, and through the media, we show like we catch those criminal and he gets his just uh, punishment. But what we are not doing through the media, we're not revealing his ad address. Uh, we're not revealing his uh, like address and his um, personal uh, his personal data why we're not doing it because a lot of people can be uh, like emotionally attached to some some kind of problems uh, like uh, for example no why not not accept 
Uh, for example, those uh, people uh, can, so we're not giving the address because a lot of people can be uh, uh, really emotional attached to that and therefore they can be uh, aggressive about, about that and um, the, then they can like uh, look for the address uh, of that criminal uh, or for example we show this address through the media and uh, so people can stalk this uh, criminal and uh, um, they can bully him and uh, his relatives or siblings can be bullied uh, as well so we think that um, when we reveal identity of uh, those criminal uh, um, we're violating not only his rights for the privacy but uh, we're violating the right for the privacy of their relatives and siblings uh, so why how this analogy attached to that um, when we uh, like some people reveal those identity um, we're showing his name and a lot of people uh, can be can like stalk him and uh, get to know his address so uh, they uh, can stalk him and therefore bully him and what is that um, it is an even punishment uh, and we're infringing his right for the security and then why is that bad because uh, his address can be revealed as well and his relatives and siblings can um, uh, can be violated by some um, Uh, doings by other people. So uh, when uh, some women are really uh, sexually violated by other people, by other men, for example, and those men are st uh, are starting to stalk her in real life, uh, she can uh, address this problem to the uh, policeman, and this policeman can uh, like uh, give him just and even punishment for that uh, but what happens in in proposition side they get uneven and unjust punishment and his basic right for the uh, security is being violated and why we should keep this uh, basic uh, security right because security right are close to the uh, right for uh, for your life just uh, because some other people can be emotional attached to that problem and can be very aggressive about that and can just um, stalk him and beat him and so it is uh, it is the very basic right for security and um, we think it is unlegitimate to get those um, uh, unjust punishment when an alternative you can get uh, woman can just if it is uh, online sexual harassment he can just block him or um, if uh, this harassment are being uh, like a lot he just can, uh, or she or he can address this problem to the policeman so uh, we think this is illegitimate to violate those rights thank you We thank the leader of the opposition and are happy to call upon the deputy prime minister. Here, here. Okay, so I will start my speech with um, answering to the many points that the um, opening opposition made and then um, extending on what my partner said. So to make it clear, we did not include um, revealing home, the home address or the phone numbers in our definition. We are legitimizing the right of exposing someone or, or someone's name um, on, on, on online forms, which, which does not include other home address and all of these things. So going and stalking people and hitting them um, 
does not stand here because we're talking about names we're talking about putting people in the position where um their family could shame them their uh, colleagues could shame them their friends could shame them for doing that or indulging in online bullying or online harassment um now one of the points that um the opening opposition made was about freedom of speech and that this takes away from freedom of speech. We hear this again and again whenever online harassment is mentioned and whenever someone wants to defend um, people from saying anything they want online. But there is a rule of thumb that um, everyone ignores, which is your freedom stops when you bypass others, uh, other people's freedoms. So when your opinion about someone's body drives them to kill themselves or suffer from mental illnesses, I beg to differ with you that this is freedom of speech. This is simple hate. There is a, there is a difference between freedom of speech and being able to um, cr criticize someone um, in a way that gives them uh, or that allows them to fix the issues that they have and just giving them straight up hate. There is a, a very big difference. And why there, why or how to prove that there is a big difference. In most countries, there are rules and laws against people who do online harassment. Uh, it does not fall under the freedom of speech in any, con in any country. Um, because it's simply uh, driving people insane. It's attacking people for no reason or for the person to feel good about themselves while um, teenagers and kids are killing themselves due to these things. So freedom of speech here does not stand whatsoever. Um, one other point that uh, the opposition made was that um, those who, like if you reveal those uh, people's names, usually they will get bullied back. But this to me is not a very, um, um, not a fair, it doesn't make a lot of sense because there are two things. First of all, people who share um, the criminal's name online know very well that their names are uh, up uh, or subject to getting the same treatment and being revealed as well. Other than this, um, their main goal from doing uh, from sharing these names is to stop or deter people from online harassment it sounds very unlogical to go ahead and do the same thing when you know that um the consequences that you're putting on other people are going to happen to you and it's your main goal to limit online harassment um one other thing is that their um their alter uh, alternative uh, was that to contact police and talk to them about these issues sadly uh, everyone who's getting online harassment feels ashamed and embarrassed about these things. Other than this, police is very busy with other things. They're usually not able to do anything when you provide them with the information that there's a stalker. We've seen a very um, viral story that went online of a girl who killed her herself after uh, getting um, uh, blackmailed by a man who uh, stalked her and who pre presented uh, to her as um, as, a, as a friend and then blackmailed her and she ended up killing herself. The police were following the case, but they were not able to do anything uh, because the police is not always able to um, um, to do things when it comes to these to these issues. So, um, uh, one second. Um, can I ask about my time? I forgot to time myself. Yeah, it's what now three fifty-seven. Okay, so. Like my partner mentioned, the amount of online harassment and cyberbullying skyrocketed, um, although the internet um, came with a lot of great benefits. It's opened the doors to people who have opinions and uh, very harmful opinions at that to go out their way and share them uh, with people who might or probably did not ask for, for those people's opinions. Um, well, why is that? First of all, we have this place that provides people with ultimate anonymity. Um, and if, if, I, if I live in the UK, for example, how would it affect me if I tell a girl in Sweden to kill herself because she has different political opinions than mine? So as you see, there is no consequence to, to what those people are doing. Other than this, um, it is very easy for you to forget that the people behind the screen is a human being. And no matter how um, unharmful you are in real life, it's, a, it's, it's very easy to fall into the trap of uh, bullying people. Unless you see the direct consequences of what, what you are going to do, unless you know that what you're going to say to people might fire back and, and attack you and put you in their position. This, this is the only way that we will stop people from indulging in these uh, practices and going ahead uh, to, to, um, to spread hate. Um, how the internet um, um, opened doors to harassment is insane in the past couple of years. And we've seen a lot of people kill, them, kill themselves over what is said to them online. Um, but let me go a bit into detail about the groups that are most affected. Uh, first of all, 
uh, as my partner mentioned, women, women are getting a lot of harassment. Um, men don't find it very harmful to send uh, inappropriate pictures to women. And although no, none of us uh, disagree that those people should be, should face consequences, uh, even in court, uh, we're here defending that they sh their names shouldn't be put on public to deter other, people's who, other people who are planning to do the same thing. Uh, one other uh, category is children. It's mind-blowing the rise in bullying that is connected to the rise of social media because to children, confrontation um, is, very, is, is a lot harder than going to someone uh, on Facebook and messaging them about what you think. So this gave a new way for children to bully each other. And if a child does not get the protection that they need, um, you cannot just stop them from using the social medias that they use and take away their phones. Um, if you do not provide a safe environment for them, they will simply be um, um, a, a very uh, huge contender for having mental illnesses and, and a lot of issues in the future. Um, also minorities, if we look at the most uh, of most of online harassment, we find it sadly mostly targeted against certain races or, or religions or minorities, which may normalizes racism in society because if you keep seeing the same sentences said about a group of people online, you will start to believe that these stereotypes are real and it will start to make it easier for people to accept these things when they hear them in the streets. Um, so it's, it, it encourages racism to um, not do anything against online bullying. Because as I said, if there is no consequence, there is nothing stopping people from actually indulging in these acts and doing whatever they want and criticizing people in bad ways that affect them in the long run. Um, so why is our, why what we are proposing will solve this issue? Uh, because, um, it will, um, because first of all, we are giving the people a taste of their own medicine. If you're going ahead and bullying, um, to bully people and cyber harass them online, uh, you must know very well that this can backfire and attack you as well. Putting immediate consequences on uh, the cyber harassment uh, and, there, and therefore a very strong deterrence from doing it, which gives us a, a lot of or uh, gets rid of toxic people online and, and um, gets rid of a lot of issues that we have online. Uh, one, one last thing I would like to add is, um, um, okay, I'm sorry, my time is over. I'm proud to propose. We're happy to call upon the member for the government. Hey, hey. Yeah. hey, you can hear me? Yep. Thank you. Okay, so today in our speech, we're going to explain to you why we believe that the legit legitimacy is not born from whether we will uh, actually will be able to solve the problem or no, or not. Legitimacy is, bo is born from the fact of whether there is a, whether we can engage in any other way with the problem, whether there is a, fairly, a market failure so big that we need to implement this system or not. And this is, we believe, where the first opposition is failing, because the first opposition is, is, uh, is supposing that, uh, that the police will, uh, will, can act efficiently, that the judicial system can act efficiently and, uh, against those sort of cyber crimes, but they never, never show, show us exactly how and why those, system will, those systems will actually be effi efficient or even capable of treating cyber crime, cyber crimes in any way. So in my speech, I will explain to you first of all why we believe that how we believe that there is a failure inside the criminal system in, uh, when engaging in uh, in all sorts of cy of uh, cyber uh, or like online harassments. But uh, uh, and in the second case, I will explain to you why we think that why we think that fa uh, that like uh, social social networks are exactly the the place where we should treat those problems. And then uh, in the f uh, if I will have time, I will speak in my third case about why we believe that it, it, uh, it, it uh, creates more support for the victims and uh, beneficial for them as well. Before that, a few points of, reba of rebuttal. So the main thing that oppositions are talking about until now is that basically there will be a lot of backlash against the, uh, the victim and he his life will be threatened physically or, uh, or at least mentally, but probably even physically. physically. So few points. A, note that uh, there, most of the analysis is, uh, is uh, based on the fact that there will be such a huge like media, uh, uh, media drama about it and a, lot of, uh, and a lot of attention. But this is relevant mostly when we're talking about public figures, mostly when we're talking about someone that is actually interested, interesting for everyone, like we saw in, like, in, Ho in Hollywood with the Me Too movement and stuff like that. When we're talking about 
about individuals about private individuals we're talking about their close environment we're talking we're talking about like your, uh, your 500 fr friends of facebook that will be aware of of, of this of, of this harassment and not the entire world second of all please please note that they're never proving to us where is this incentive to uh, to actually lynch someone or, or or create this bullying for someone is coming because we do not believe that every individual is is born is born bad and will be willing to create uh, to harm to harm the other individual to this extent we believe that they're they're still they're still um uh, uh, most of us still feel de feel deterred from doing the, from doing this uh, from doing this uh, these acts, and most of us are simply not uh, will not go this uh, this uh, this far to harm to harm this individual. And further, of all, please note that we don't understand how your right for security is being infringed here. We don't. We believe that all the all the all the mechanisms that are built today in order to protect your security are still uh, are still being in place. We believe that there is no delta detection create some infringement of rights over here and hence we are opposing this idea entirely let's go to our case because I want to explain to you why we think that the criminal system is simply not suited in order to deal with those crimes. So a few points here. A, we, we believe that most of our systems, like judici judici the judicial systems and, and rules, are simply outdated. It means that you are they are not moving fast enough with the technology in order in, in order to in order to be efficient in preventing those sort of crimes. There are no specific legislation in order to show what is online harassment. And we see that legislations are usually very complicated. In order to prove that there is a workplace harassment, for example, you need to, to fit like five different criteria of showing in hierarchies, showing uh, uh, consistency and stuff, like, uh, and stuff like this. And it means that a lot of times when there is no specific, specific, specific laws that it is much harder for the police or the, or, or, or the or the courts afterwards to actually prove something and to actually solve these sort of crimes. Second of all, note that it's very hard to actually uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, well, let's use the word solve because I can't think of the right word to solve those crimes. Why? Because a lot of times, simply showing evidence like for, like a, a transcription of your of your uh, of your uh, chats or something like this is not enough because uh, it's not it's not enough because uh, uh, because we have all those uh, all those uh, laws about uh, like the freedom of speech and, st and stuff and stuff like this and, and it's simply it's simply uh, referred as here. Third of all, we believe that it's even harder for the victim, not simply like the not the usual case about why it's hard for them actively to, to go to police and repeat the case. This is all. Uh, this is all still uh, uh, still works here. But moreover, note that now we need we, we expect the victim to create like an active chase of the system in order to uh, 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 gain a. a a, a restraint order. You need to go to your advocate. You need you, you, you need to persuade. You need to persuade judges. You need to do all this active sort 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 of. Uh, of of things in order to in order to actually in order to actually achieve this and it means the burden falls on you much more than it falls on the on the uh, harasser to defend himself when you think it's unjust but first of all note that we uh, that OG sell, says to us that there is no interest in the police to uh, in the police or the judicial system to go after those those sort of crimes and be, be, uh, uh, but I never explain why we believe there is no interest but why is first of all because they're they're regarded as less dangerous they're regarded as crimes that are not uh, not imposing like a physical harm on you a lot of times and hence there is less incentive but moreover there is less public pressure to go after those sort of offenders again because because those things are hard to explain because th those people are uh, hiding behind keyboards and stuff like that now now let's move to our second 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 uh, case. We believe that Facebook is the new community you live in. We believe like Facebook or Twitter or something else is like the new village where there is a high a high uh, a high approachability for everyone. It means you can PM everyone. You can know things about everyone. You can you can contact everyone because they're so high because there is a st such a high uh, uh, a high notion of accessibility we believe that a lot of time a lot of times uh, a lot of times it is legitimate to let people know who are the people who are living in their village with them are there douchebags are there harassers are, are there are, are, are there simply bad people we believe that this is 
that this is much more analogous to, uh, uh, to living on, in the same building and living in the same streets. We see that Facebook already uses its users in order to enforce, in, enforce laws where they're actively asking them to, uh, uh, to uh, like say this is offensive and stuff and stuff like this. And this is why we think it's even more legitimate. I'm out of time, so there will be no fourth case, but because we believe there's a failure market, because this is how we solve it the best, we are very proud to propose. So Tom, I'm gonna, gonna sum up this debate by two main clashes, why this is legitimate on the basis of why it is indeed necessary and needed and be in uh, two different situations, be criminal situation and, uh, and situation which are not criminal. But first let's have lots of point of rebuttal. So what do we hear from two sides of the bench? So the first is the side is saying, no, this would be in, in proportionate people, uh, 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 security and privacy, it would be endangered. So, A, we don't see why they themselves can't approach to the police. If they're asking the victims to approach the police, they, if they will be jeopardized in the future, can go to the police as well. The same logics apply in here. In addition to that, we don't think that this is a common case because the average people I'm not sure 100% what's happened. They don't have enough of an incentive to actually go and attack other people. And we assume that the people that are against bullying won't go and bully other people there, uh, 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 to begin with. In addition to that, what do we hear from them? No, th th their family would be in, uh, 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 is, uh, suffering from uh, 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 collateral damages. We assume that it might happen sometimes if there would be sanctions against uh, people who are harassing other people, but that's their own fault. And according to the logic, we can't punish people anytime. I mean, in the criminal system, there are people are going to send to jail and the family suffering from that. It is okay when that happens because they need to pay the price for what they have done. It's not the victim a, 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 a consideration to take that into account. In addition to that, they say, but now they can just go to the police or block, block someone uh, on the social media. As my partner explained, the police are many times inefficient because they disregard those cases and assume that even if there is low uh, regarding that the like, second half is saying, the police many times don't think it's important enough because, oh, it's virtual. Crime, no, no one gives enough of a fact about that. It happens a lot. So we should focus on other stuff. So the police is inefficient. In addition to that, I will get to in the clash how, uh, how much it suffer from consistent failure in dealing with that. So we don't think it's efficient. We actually believe that when we publish that on the social media, that will get the people's attention. That will raise that into awareness and will put pressure on the police and on the system to deal with it and in many occasions it's not necessarily criminal and in that case it's, it's we have no other things rather than publishing on a, 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 the agora as anna said the social media is the new public discourse this is our ability to have social norm and without our that without having that we want to be able a, 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 to have the, the norms that we have or won't be able to get the support that we need. So they say, but note this a, 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 in this, uh, 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 and that last but not least, they say, but go to the police. We say that it's not necessarily mutually exclusive. People can still go to the police and still publish that, but it's much relevant in situation where people won't be able to go to the police police or when the police is inefficient in dealing with that. And in cases where people are still going anonymous, okay, so it won't uh, uh, solve the problem over there, we're okay with that as, at, as long as we will solve it in other situation. So let's get into the clashes. A, why we think this is legitimate in situation where we're talking about criminal situation. So note, Tom, that this debate isn't about the fact that, that we need, uh, uh, the fact that there would, would, would actually be, be a deterrence because actually opposition concede the fact that, it that there would be a, a, a backlash against people that are committing those kind of stuff. So the question remains whether, whether or not it's justified on, on the basis of the fact that we don't have necessarily good alternatives to that. The first one is that the criminal system consistently over lack to deal with those situations as only Anna analyzed. She explained to you why many times we don't have the proper laws into dealing with that. In addition to that, it demands the victim 
actively pursuing and seeking help in, in situation where it's not con uh, 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 considered to be a severe crime in a situation where there, there is a physical rape, people at least would deal with that. But in those situations, she needs to get her own lawyer to pursue uh, 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 and persuade the police to keep with that case, to persuade uh, the prosecutor to take it into court, uh, uh, into court and not only plea bargaining, if it even gets to, uh, to that and not being ignored and, and the file uh, is being closed. Uh, and I'll also explain to you why it, it, it might be hard for, for the people to ex uh, expose themselves into hostile uh, 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 police and so on. So we think that the criminal system suffer from a consistent behavior that prevent them from uh, actually tackling that problem. And should be that, you have to prove above all doubt. We think that in many situations, as I explained, there are lots of criteria, hierarchy showing how much it affects you, the fact that it was consistent and so on, to the extent that it can't be proven in case, but it is still a situation where people were harmed, were harassed, even if it wasn't criminal. In those cases, and this is important too, today there's a confusion that people think that if something is uh, uh, closing, I don't know, no one asked. So yeah, so people nowadays confuse themselves and think that if something isn't criminal, so uh, there isn't a direct problem that we need to deal with. This is where Anna comes up and tells you, note, not everything is criminal. There's a dif difference between uh, something uh, criminal and between something being okay, being ethical. And in previous days, our ability to actually get support from the public, our ability to shape social norms, our ability to actually a a a a expose people and break the chain of silence is being done throughout sharing with your friends, throughout people knowing and saying that this is not okay. Through uh, 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 sorry, uh, yeah, it's saying that, that it's not okay. And this is a tool that is much needed in a situation with not everything is criminal, but we still need people to get the support from the, their surrounding. It's still much needed in order to us, for us to say that this is a line you shouldn't cross. Even if that line isn't criminal, we still want you to stop and listen. And in those cases, social norm and discourse are being shaped throughout the social media and this is where Anna comes explain to you how crucial this is yeah. because without these, tool, these tools you're out of time without those tools we don't have the ability to have that because of the fact that the criminal system is broken due to the fact that many cases is not necessarily criminal and we need that agora in order to deal with those problems more than happy to propose thank you Right. Um, so let's start. So the way I see this debate currently is I give the first to the closing government, then the second to the opening opposition in a very close call with the third to the opening government. Um, just to be clear, I mean that the call between the opening up and the opening gov is very close and very, very, I could see it flipping and being the other way around. And then Sadly, lastly, I tend to place CO fourth currently. Let's dive into the explanation. So let's start actually in the top half of the debate because I think also this is the most, the closest call between the, um, all the comparisons. So basically opening government says, um, the main case says, look, um, this is now going to create consequences in situations where consequences weren't enough or weren't significant enough and therefore people harassed a lot more than, for example, on the street. Um, thus, we're going to have less harassment and more deterrence. Opening opposition, I think, say a couple of things. Um, firstly, and least importantly, is the idea that people are going to be anonymous. Um, I don't think this is very, changes a lot in the debate since those people seem out of the debate in general since you, just can't expose who they are. Um, and there's no analysis in opening up about people becoming a lot more anonymous than before or something like that. So it's just a point about the fact that this motion applies to a smaller number of people, but it doesn't change anything in the top half of the debate. But then opening up do say two things. A, they tell us that 
under status quo, even when we put someone into prison, we don't uh, necessarily expose their um, personal detail details um, because then they might be, they or their family might be harmed. This is unproportionate. Um, and secondly, that there are alternatives like just blocking these people from social media or going to the police, which is also preferable. Opening, I think that at this point of the debate, there are basically two questions that stand at the top half of the debate. Firstly, is this a proportionate response? Um, oh, oh, don't disagree that this is an effective one. They just say this is proportionate. And secondly, are there alternatives which are good enough, which is a sub-question of whether it is proportionate or not, but should be discussed separately? I tend to say at the end of the debate that I lean slightly towards opening up on both of these questions, but I can definitely see um, the call being the other way around. So let's dive into each of these questions. So is it a proportionate response? Um, so basically, opening opposition says, as I said before, look, uh, we don't publish the addresses necessarily of people who have committed crime because then other individuals like their family members might be harmed as well. The only response opening government give um, to this is, but we didn't talk about addresses, but just like uh, addresses or phone numbers. Um, I think that while that is correct, I don't think that opening opposition's logic depends on having a physical home address or phone number. Um, the fact that I can still find the relatives of that person and then they might be fired or harassed still seems to happen to the same extent in the debate, um, even if nobody would break into their house. Given that, I think that there are two issues in the comparison that tend to place opening up above the opening government. The first one is that I don't think that opening government actually ever justify this measure. So the basic thing that opening opposition say is even if it's effective, it's unclear that it is justified for people to take the law into their own, own hands in that way um, or to expose people like that. I don't think that opening government ever respond as to why it is legitimate, even if it is effective. Secondly, I think, and if I have to, if that is not sufficient enough to say that opening government don't manage to respond to the burden that opening opposition place upon them, opening opposition also tell me why innocent people get harmed in the way. And I don't think, and it's again, a slight justification of why it is not okay to expose this information because innocent people like family members might get harmed or might get fired and suffer the consequences. Given the fact that opening government never explain why it is a proportionate response, a proportionate tool to use, even though opening opposition clearly placed that burden on them from the first point from the get-go, and that it seems that also innocent people are harmed, which gives some intuition as to why it might be not proportionate, I lean likely towards opening opposition on the idea that it is not a proportionate response. Secondly, on the idea of whether we have sufficient alternatives, and therefore it is, even if it was proportionate, we have better resource, better tools to use. So here I think again that I lean slightly towards the opening opposition, but it's opening opposition would still win the top half even if they lose that question. Um, because even if there aren't necessarily better alternatives, but still this use by its, this tool by itself is illegitimate to use, then it's not, I don't necessarily care if it is, um, if those alternatives are accessible enough. And I think that here again, mainly opening opposition say, look, but people can just block people who harass them or can report them or can go to the police. Um, and it is also preferable. Opening government respond by saying that some people are too embarrassed to go to the police. Um, I would say that it is unclear to me if I have to judge that response to opening up, why people who are embarrassed to go to the police feel fine um, publishing to the entire world that they were harassed in some way. And secondly, that the police is busy with other things, which is again, I think, a, a response, but not a very convincing one. So at the end, I, th I think tend to say that I'm not very convinced by 
either responses from opening government to opening opposition as to why it is so impractical to go to the police, it might be somewhat difficult. Therefore, again, I tend to lean lightly towards the opening opposition on, on that question and say that it seems to me that there are reasonable alternatives for most individuals and therefore they sh should pursue them instead of um, posting online the identity of their harassers. Given that at the end of the top half, therefore, it seems to be, even though effective, not a proportionate response and there are better alternatives accessible enough, I tend to place opening up above the opening government. Just to be clear, however, I think it is a completely legitimate call in the debate to say, nope, Opening opposition should explain why harming the um, assailant or their family is more important than the victim protecting themselves and having less crime overall. And therefore, opening government would win just because they do prove that a lot of people are now not going to be harassed in the future as a result of this. And this seems important or more important to me as a judge than um, maybe some family members getting harmed and the fact that you can go to the police in some cases. But again, I think that the way the top half has evolved in the debate pushes me towards the way I view it, but I don't think it is impossible or illegitimate or even incorrect to a large extent to switch the call in the top half and to place opening government above the opening opposition. However, the way I view it currently, I think it is more correct to place opening up above the opening of. Let's bring in closing gov. So I tend to say that there are two reasons I tend to place closing gov above both opening half teams, no matter which one wins the top half of the debate. The first one, I think that just give better analysis on why it is so that it is legitimate to use it as a tool. I think that they are correct in framing it as both top half teams agree that this is actually an effective tool in deterring, given that opening opposition agree that the person who has assaulted um, the assailant was, is assailant the person who assaulted? Let's assume so. Um, if, if not, then I'm sorry, he is selling. Um, the person who assault, committed the assault um, would be harmed, meaning that obviously they're going to be deterred to some extent. Therefore, they give two justifications as to why this is okay. Uh, the first one is that just in, there are systematic problems with the justice system slash the police. Um, and given no other alternative, therefore it is justified to pursue justice that way. I don't think that is analyzed enough as to why it is legitimate, but it is again, better analysis in both top half teams. And secondly, the idea that people in this social media is like a village and people have a right to know who lives with them or who is other social media and it's just informing people regarding others. I think both of these justifications, even though they are not 100% convincing, our better analysis is better. Our better analysis as to why this is a legitimate tool to use by um, people who were harmed um, and therefore justified. Secondly, however, and I think maybe even more importantly, I think that closing our minute bench to respond quite well to most of the claims made by the opening opposition. Firstly, the idea that we're not necessarily going to see huge damage given that people are uncertain whether the person who um, reveal the information online is correct and are unlikely to therefore use it to harm others. B, if they're so against bullying and harassment, it is unlikely for them to significantly harass others. Secondly, I think that they're correct in pointing out that even though the family might be harmed in some cases, um, I think that they use opening opposition's analogy to their benefit when they claim, but also, when we, send, when, when we send someone to prison, their family might be harmed along the way, um, which I think is correct. And therefore, again, responded to that significant claim from our opening opposition in quite a convincing way. Um, and thirdly, they're correct in pointing out that people can still go to the police as well, and this is not mutually exclusive. Um, this would become more important in a second um, when comparing CO to OG, but even by itself, it does mitigate to an extent that claim made by opening opposition. Therefore, I think that at the end of the debate, closing government gives significant responses that are significantly better than opening government to the opening up and gives significantly better analysis on why it is a legitimate tool to use, 
both of these combined definitely place them above both opening government and both opening opposition at the end of the debate. If I have to make the direct comparison, I think that it is definitely legitimate for people to use that tool, given that even if some family members might get harmed, um, it is unclear whether that is unjustified, and there are enough justifications that CG provide as to why this tool is legitimate. And also, when comparing directly to the opening government, the level of analysis and significantly better responding to the claims that were the discussion in the opening half, again, place closing gov above the opening gov as well. Let's bring in CO. So firstly, we need to say that a lot of the things that CO say don't get, I don't, I can't credit them. Um, two sp specific claims that are important um, that I can't give credit to CO. Firstly, um, the idea that now the person whose identity was revealed online is going to be um, assaulted um, or harassed themselves. That is completely opening ops material and I couldn't find an extension there from closing up. Secondly, in the whip speech, there is new material regarding the fact that the um, person whose identity was revealed, the assailant, assaulter, the person who assaulted uh, or harassed, the harasser, this is now the word I'm going to use, the harasser is going to be very angry um, about their identity being revealed online and therefore harass the victim again. Um, this is completely new material, but also should be noted that the consequence of it is seems like what happens in status quo um, harassment. It's unclear why it is worse harassment than status quo. Then CO make, I think, three important contributions. The first one is the idea that there might be some mistakes and therefore we could have harmed an individual who was innocent. Maybe we didn't understand that person, it was really harassment, maybe it's not them, etc. cetera. Um, and secondly, that it is better um, to go through court because one case in court creates more of a public discussion or public buzz um, around it than um, sexual, than um, revealing it on social media. Regarding the second one, the first one will weigh in a second against both opening and half teams. Regarding the second one, I just don't understand why those things are mutually exclusive from the get-go. And it is unclear to me why the comparative is court versus social media and not just maybe court, but also social, uh, maybe court, but also social media. Specifically, it becomes more true when closed government tell you before the extension speech that some cases just aren't criminal, don't go to court. And when they respond directly to a case, when they say it is not mutually exclusive and you don't respond to that again. So at that point, even in comparison to both top half teams, given the huge issues that point has, I tend to say that it just seems to be irrelevant to the debate. Lastly, I think that closing up add some response, closing up add some responses to both government teams. Firstly, the idea that social media networks can block and um, your um, um, comments might be visible. Um, and secondly, the idea that it is unclear that CGR correct and it is so hard, it's so hard to prove um, in court. Let's weigh those contributions, the idea that there might be mistakes and these two responses against opening government. So I think that my main issue with the comparison between the opening government and the closing up is engagement. What do I mean by that? Let's say I accept that maybe sometimes we can, social media networks like Facebook can block people who post it publicly. Um, OG say correct, point out correctly in a POI to closing up that a lot of the time it happens under private chats and it is not therefore that accessible. But even if it was the case, and even if I accept CEO's case that sometimes there might be mistakes and we harmed someone who is innocent, it is unclear to me why it is more important than OG's claim. So opening government tell you, look, people today are harassed. We have no, sometimes there are scenarios in which they suffer no consequences for harassing other individuals. Therefore, having attaching consequences to their actions would lead to them being more deterred. Closing opposition never actually fully respond to that. And therefore, even if I accept that in 10% of the scenarios that OG discuss, there might be other avenues to pursue. And even if I accept that in some of the situations, 10, 20, 30%, we might um, um, 
blame someone who was actually innocent, it is unclear to me, even if I accept both of these, why they are worse than the benefit that OG provide in this debate. And it, it is definitely the burden of CO to engage with opening government and explain why it is more important. Given that, I tend to place closing opposition below opening government. The same rationale would also apply, by the way, to the opening opposition, meaning I think that it is unclear why CO's material, even if I accept it to the full extent, is more important than the contributions from the opening opposition, and they never engage with either top half teams and explain why their extension is more important. Are there questions about the call or the explanation of the call?